Hey, so I'm Jesse, and I'm here again at the Wolfram Tech Conference 2017. So if y'all haven't tuned in, I'm just kind of interviewing developers and other interesting people who are using our technology in really cool ways. And this session I'm here with Ian, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what he does here at Wolfram and what he's doing here at the Tech Conference specifically. Yeah, yeah. So um, I've uh, been here at Wolfram for a while as a developer writing code and developing um, device drivers as well as um, other operating system functionality um, to interface with external systems um, like other programming languages, you know, complicated devices, stuff like that. Um, and I'm giving a couple talks here on systems like that. Um, and we have the connected devices booth set up. Mm -hmm. um, with some, some devices. Yeah, lots of really cool demos over yeah. there. Like there's a Roomba and there's um, this like pendulum thing. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you have like right here? Yeah, so, so right here we have an Arduino um, that's hooked up to a um, shield, an, Ad an Adafruit NeoPixel shield where um, Mathematica is controlling all of the, the LEDs on this. Um, so, um, you know, the, the code here uh, you can control either you know individual LEDs or all of them at once, um, and so we have it set up to kind of show how you can use Mathematica to program uh, some of these kind of embedded devices mm -hmm. and build cool applications. So since you know anyone is tuning in, can you kind of explain what an Arduino is? Sure, how it's different sure. From a Raspberry Pi and yeah. so on. Um, so uh, an Arduino is kind of a lot like you know a simple watch, right? It's like one one exact thing, and that's all it does, and so. Here, when you use it with Mathematica, it runs one specific program um, that you know communicates with Mathematica, and in this case, with a, a little shield thing. Um, and so, it's it's really common and used in like robotics projects or other kind of like do-it-yourself electronics. Um, and yeah, and so but with respect to the Raspberry Pi, um, the Raspberry Pi is like a full computer. Um, it runs Linux, um, and you know it can do web browsing. It can, you know word processing, it even runs Mathematica, um, whereas the Arduino just runs like one specific thing. Mm -hmm. You program it with one sketch, they call it. So you can kind of like, the Arduino kind of takes in information and does one specific task, whereas the Raspberry Pi can control yeah. other kind of pieces of technology and kind of, um, uh, you can... Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, yeah. There, there's still a lot that you can do with uh, with the Arduino, um, but it's not running what we call an operating system. So it does one task. It does like one very simple processor, and it doesn't do anything else. Whereas your computer, you know, in the background, it might be updating, right. or it might be, yeah. you know, downloading videos, or you know, what it, it can do lots of different things simultaneously. Whereas the Arduino just does one mm -hmm. one thing, and and sometimes those things um, have like important timing requirements. Like so, this. You know this thing. Um, there's a timing requirement of like setting all the LEDs mm -hmm. appropriately um, and that kind of thing. So um, you can't do that directly from the computer, and you have to hook it up to an Arduino. Right. Um, so a lot of times you use Mathematica for that, where you hook up your kind of raw hardware to the uh, to the Arduino, and then control the Arduino through it. So you can hook up this kind of more raw hardware to Mathematica using Arduino as like a middle middle thing. So is this what your talk is about, or one of your talks? He's given a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Conference. So, um, so actually, my talk isn't actually about this stuff. Um, the talk that I'm giving tomorrow is on uh, using Python with with Wolfram language. In uh, the new release of the Wolfram language, uh, we added a functionality called external evaluate, where you can run Python code and get back results. Oh, that's um, cool. And, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's really useful talking to people here. Um, and getting, you know, like they're like, hey, I do this kind of application in Python, and, you know, how do I integrate that into the rest of my Wolfram stuff? And, you know, it's really useful for, for people who have, like, really complicated workflows where they have a lot of a lot of different pieces to kind of fit together, and they can use Mathematica to do all that. Yeah, I think before the only, like, um, external, like, other language functionality was, like, an embed code uh, function. Yeah, so, so embed code was, was uh, one, one of the things, you know, I mean, there is, like, other languages, like, like Java, we have right, JLink yeah, yeah. Um, and .NET and stuff like that, but with external evaluate, kind of what we're going for is a, a super easy to use and kind of, like, you know, just, uh, I mean, there's a lot of setup that you have to do for Java and right. JLink and other things, whereas with external evaluate, it's really, you know, you just get your Python code and just copy and paste it in and you're just ready to go. That's cool. Um, so, yeah. 
And so what are some of the other, since we're not over there right now, sure. what are some of the other demos going on? Yeah. There's the Roomba, I think that's powered by the Raspberry Pi. Yep. There's like a pendulum thing, I don't really know. Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, we have a Roomba hooked up to a Raspberry Pi where the Raspberry Pi is controlling the Roomba and kind of driving it around mm -hmm. using Mathematica. Uh, we have another demo with um, uh, Vernier sensors. Vernier is a company that makes these sensors for like labs and educational purposes. Um, and we have a, a demo of those sensors hooked up to Mathematica, and you can read them right into Mathematica. Um, we have a couple Raspberry Pis set up um, with, uh, well, one of them actually is showing a demo of a uh, 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 former astronaut who decided to build a thing for his plane. Um, to calculate loss of control. Um, he did that in Mathematica and built this little application that used machine learning and other things to figure out when a plane is about to kind of lose control. Um, and so we have a, that kind of set up over there so you can check that out. Oh, that's um, really cool. But yeah, no, there's there's a lot of cool stuff over there. I'm probably forgetting some stuff, but <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I think we have someone over there who's also, um, hey. Hey, what Brett. Are, you're just oh, listening, okay. you don't want to talk about any of okay. the demos. It's okay, yeah. Uh, not everyone wants to be on Facebook Live, but it's fine. Um, but no, I think I think those were the like there are four demos mm -hmm. over there. Um, yeah. I guess what are I what are some like common use cases for for common um, like applications that you've seen with uh, Arduinos and Raspberry Pi with Wolfram language? Sure. Yeah. So so definitely one one big one is um, just being able to gather sensor data and do um, you know data science on that. Um, so, for example, you know, you have some kind of like, I mean, a very common one is weather. You know, people want to like analyze, you know, what is the weather like for the past seven days. And so you get, you know, a weather station or, you know, barometer or whatever kind of sensors and hook them up to the Arduino. And then you can read that data into, into uh, Mathematica with that. Um, uh, you can read that sensor data into Mathematica. Um, so that's definitely another one. A really big one is robotics. You know, people want to build robots and be able to control the robots from Mathematica. Um, and so building these device drivers um, on top of the Arduino device drivers is useful. Um, that's, that's kind of what we did here is kind of took the, the base Arduino driver that Mathematica has installed and extended it a little bit um, to work with the NeoPixel shield um, to control it. But, but yeah, so robotics is another big one. Um, so the Arduino and other external device functionality, when, was that introduced in version 10 or version 11? Yep, so, um, so the first Arduino stuff um, was actually my project as an intern um, and came in 10.1. Okay. Um, that was the, the first kind of iteration of it. And there yeah, had it was been like some, 2015 or something. Yeah, it was, yeah, okay. it was actually a while ago, yeah. But uh, yeah, it came in um, and, and there have been some, you know, gradual improvements over the the releases, but that was the core release, is 10.1. So what are you hoping to add in the latest, or the upcoming 11.3 build? Yeah, so so there's a lot of stuff I'm working on for 11.3. Recently, you know, it really extending out our connection to Python and these other programming languages is, is uh, really important for us going into 11.3. Um, primarily because, you know, being here, getting to talk to users after 11.2 is released, there's a lot of, you know, it's really useful to people, but there's, you know, specific things that they want to do with it and, you know, ways that they want to extend it for their own stuff. Um, you know, one big thing is adding, like, support for NumPy. This is a big uh, Python right. scientific computing package, and so adding support for that, as well as some other... Um, <laughs> Some other packages and extensions to it um, is, is a big thing for 11.3, and some of some of that I'll be demoing in my um, thing tomorrow, my talk tomorrow. So. Okay, cool. Um, well, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. You're having two talks this conference, so uh, you're quite busy. So <laughs> thanks again for taking the time to kind of yeah, talk no with problem. me about these things and talk to our kind of viewers yeah, about it. That's great.